today we are going to talk about progressive web applications. This is a very, very, very short lecture. Anyway, progressive web applications. So uh, the topic of today's lecture is basically the progressive web apps and their uh, contents or the, the building blocks. So what makes a progressive web app? And if you remember me talking about responsive design, I was kind of confused and actually didn't know what to do with that. And with progressive web apps, I had about the same feeling. So what the hell is that? Then I googled that and it turns out that the topmost link is the page about progressive web applications here in, in Google. And they say that progressive web applications take advantage of new technologies to bring the best of mobile sites and native applications to users. So, you know, you already know what this is. This is like the best, except it doesn't really tell you what it is. It's just, you know, the best. They are more reliable, fast and engaging, whatever that means. I mean, if you have a technology to make a web page engaging, well, that's awesome. But I think it's more about the content that is engaging, but who knows. Sarcasm aside, this is supposed to be a native-like web application. So you use it on, on a mobile device and it feels like you're using a native application. There are a few characteristics or a few things that you can make to imitate the look and feel of a native application. One of them is instant loading, which means that regardless of the quality of the internet connection, which is especially important in the developing markets and developing countries, this is what you kind of have in a native app. You click it or tap it and then it starts and it's there. And with a web application, it sometimes is not the case because you have to fetch the data. So there is a technique that we can use to shorten the loading time to the bare minimum. And then we have the almost instant loading of our application. Second thing is the smooth and eye-catching uh, all the bling to it so it has to look appealing and this is again something that native apps have they can use various effects which you can implement to have this nice animations transitions and so on fortunately css is improving in that so we can achieve the same stuff with css then we have security so everything basically comes through https which means it's really hard to hijack the traffic then we should have responsive layouts, so we should be device independent. This is again something that native apps have. And this is again something we can pretty much get for free when using responsive layouts. I think the most important thing, what separates a native app from a web app, or what used to separate, was the ability to have push notifications. So even if your application is closed, you can still receive notifications from the server and then you can do something with those notifications. There is an API nowadays in the progressive web apps to allow push notifications for a web application. So it is possible to have the browser closed and not running and still receive some notification from the server about the data and then you can act accordingly. Finally, native apps we can install, we can go to a store, App Store, Google Store, some other store, and we can just select it there and, and install it. For web applications, we can't really do that, except that we can add it to home screen. So we can kind of go around the fact that we have to install it from some other source. We can just pin it to the home screen and then the operating system will think that this is almost like a native app. I mean, for the user, it will not matter. It's there on the home screen. They can drag it to different places. I guess this is like kind of some the native-like web application. It's still a web application. It runs somewhere in the internet on a web server. But if you apply certain techniques to it, then you can have it almost like a native application. And the user basically will not be able to tell the difference. There are some pros and cons of this approach. So definitely the biggest advantage is that now you have one code base because it's a web application. So you have it in one place and regardless of the device that you, your users are using, you still have one code, nothing else. And well, it's at least in theory is device independent. So no matter the device, they can still access your code. The previous point about one code base is that if your service requires a native app, well, you no longer need to ship it because if it's a progressive web app, then it's almost like a native app for the user. Some disadvantages, first of all, this is not a standard. 
I read somewhere in the internet that this is a marketing fluff for a technology stack. And that's actually true. This is just a fancy name for a set of technologies that are already available. And if you just apply all of them, then you can say that you have done a progressive web application. Well, you could have done it without actually knowing that you're doing it. It's using standards or almost standards. So at least that part is good. And then it's actually device dependent because it requires Chrome. In theory, you can use it on any device you want as long as it supports Chrome, which kind of may limit the subset of potential users. It seems like this is going to be the next big thing because, as I told previously, the mobile web usage is increasing. So nowadays, roughly every fourth user is a mobile only user of the Internet. So it's quite a huge market. And then web applications are developed mostly with mobile in mind. So I was presenting you the mobile first approach and then the responsive layout. So you probably should have already known the benefits of why applying mobile first approach and why focusing on mobile devices is good. Those progressive web apps, they add this little bit of extra that you need to take the uh, web apps to the next level. So to make them feel almost like a native app and without a need of having an app store like in the middle between you and your users. That's good. Let's talk a few minutes about the parts that are there. So service workers are basically what brings this native support for the web. This is the picture. I stole it from Vadin's presentation about progressive web applications. Since I'm employed by Vadin, then I guess it's still okay. From this diagram, you should figure out what the service worker is doing. It, it's an intermediary between the application and the data. So it runs locally on the phone. And if you're connected to the net, then it will fetch stuff from the internet. And if you're not, then it will fetch from a local cache, which will give your application an offline support. Then you can make your users happy using your application without actually being connected to the internet. In more details, this is just the JavaScript code that is executed with your application. And it's a request proxy. So it runs in a separate thread in a background somewhere. It's triggered by various events that happen in your application or in the system, for example. It's fortunately or unfortunately quite complicated and low level code. It's supposed or it's expected to be reused from libraries. So if you need, for example, push support, then you just search for a service worker that does that and add it to your application. If you need some other service worker, then you just grab it from some library and add it to your code and then it works. And there are ready-made, oh, there's a, there's a typo, ready-made samples from Mozilla and, and Google, for example. The drawback is that there is a limited support for service workers. Chrome, of course, supports that. I think there is partial, at least, support from Firefox and Opera. Um, my guess is that this will be improving in the future, so next year might be that almost all the browsers will support that with exception of one, I'm pretty sure. The next building block of a progressive web application is something called App Shell. The intention of that is to lower the loading time. So service workers, they make your application work like a native app. And this is intended to remove fetching the data or the excess amount of data from your app so that it starts instantly. And it's done by, well, basically having a design approach and as I said previously, this is not like a standard or anything. This is just a technique. Progressive Web Apps is just a name for applying all those different techniques. This is a good practice outside of Progressive Web Apps. So it makes you think about separating the layout from the data. So the layout loads first. And that's usually quite simple because, you know, you have just basic structure. You have a top bar, left bar, content. That's it. You can load that in seconds. And you can fetch the data for that later. If you, for example, apply some loading indicators or whatnot, then the users will get your application instantly. They will see that, OK, it has run. There is something going on in the background. Well, then they will just wait until you fetch the data. And that's because the layout data is small, as I said, compared to the application data. You have a bunch of stuff that you have to fetch from somewhere. And the layout is just a few divs, so you can do that. Finally, we have installing a web application. So, well, we can't do it except that if you make a manifest file. If a web application has a manifest JSON somewhere, which defines the metadata of application, a name, icons, theme, orientation, whether it runs full screen or not, so on, then we can use it to display it almost as a native. So the web browser will then switch to a full screen mode, for example, and will apply the default system theming. 
so that it almost looks like a native app. It still isn't, it runs inside a web browser, but it's almost there. And that's in most cases close enough. And installable in this case means that we can add it to a home screen and it currently works for supported browsers, which I think it's only one. So it's Chrome again. And if you want to be able to pin it to the home screen, then you have to use Chrome and there is an option to pin an application to the home screen. What comes as a result is that your application sits or the icon of, of your application sits on the home screen just as it would be a native app and it opens in the browser so as i said there is practically no way to tell a difference if it's a native app or a web app this way few words about security so i said previously that https is required and if you wonder for the reasons why it is required is that because service workers require https and why they do it well because they require it there are some reasons explained on the progressive web app page mostly it's for security reasons and for integrity reasons so with https it's much harder to hijack the connection or to listen to the connection to get the data and of course google is caring about protecting our privacy that's also why it's there. You may notice that it's not necessarily a progressive web app related initiative. For example, there is Let's Encrypt web page, which provides free HTTPS certificates for your servers, and it's totally unrelated to progressive web apps. There is a trend nowadays in the internet to kind of have everything encrypted, so running through a secure connection. And I guess progressive web apps or service workers is just building on that and adding another reason to actually go HTTPS. So if that really quick crash course was enough to get you interested, here are some resources to get started. So First link is the, where everything started. So it's the Google's webpage on progressive web apps. There are some examples on an aptly named pwa.rocks. So you can go and see some examples there. And Vadin has made a tutorial and a webinar in the link that you see there. Two of our experts, Marcus and June, they are showing how to build a progressive web application in something like 35 minutes, I think. So it's a very interesting webinar to watch. This was basically all the information I could dig up and give you in a form that I will also understand. That's it. We have gone through 11 lectures. Thank you.